welcome back to my channel and if you are new to my channel welcome if you watched my last hysterectomy series video and now you are looking at the title of this video you might be a little confused because I said in the last video that that would probably be the last update video because at eight weeks I was feeling pretty much back to normal I mean in terms of like life being back to normal with my body things were back to normal with my body but like I have heard since I got the surgery before I got the surgery this journey really is like a roller coaster there are lots of ups and downs and I'm finding that to be truer than ever I believe I'm at like 12 weeks now I stopped I stopped you know counting but after the eight week mark things happen and now here we are with another update so instead of continuing to ramble about that well, first of all, you know, let me say that if there were something like if there was one small thing or maybe one big thing even, I maybe wouldn't have done an update. But because there were lots of like little things and things that were significant, there were enough experiences for me to say, hey, you know what, this is going to help somebody. This could help somebody. And I felt like it was worth sharing. So anyways at this point let's just jump right into the update the most significant thing that happened the real reason that i am making this video is because shortly after i filmed my eight week update i started experiencing ovulation pains now i can't say for sure like with a hundred percent certainty that that's what it was because i am not a doctor obviously but I'm pretty certain that that's what it was because I was experiencing all of the symptoms of like menstruation without the actual period. And the more you read, research, watch, you will come to find that that's actually pretty normal. A lot of women will still have ovulation pains week to or month to month. Some might have ovulation pain. I can't even speak today. Some might have ovulation pains one month and then not have them again for four months. But my ovulation pains, it lined up with the update in the video in which I said that I felt like I was on my period, but obviously not having my period because I was just kind of emotional and having a little bit of like pain and things like that. But you know, I couldn't be certain just because it was mixed in with a lot of other things. But at this point, I think that's what happened. And let me kind of talk about the details. So shortly after I made that last video, we took a week long vacation to see my sister-in-law. It's about a 16 hour drive, right? So I packed the night before. I packed all of my like little tight shorts and all of my tank tops and everything that I would wear on vacation. The next day we get in the car and probably within two, three hours of the drive, I felt like I was on my period. When I had my period as a, as a young adult, as a child, I guess essentially, I would be hunched over in pain and so much pain. And now one thing I wanna make perfectly clear to you guys, just so you can maybe know what to expect, just because you get a hysterectomy does not mean that you are necessarily not going to have the pain that is associated with being a woman. And so what it was, I ended up having to pull over at a gas station and getting my doll because I just had really bad, like a really bad cramping sensation. I was super bloated. I looked like I was probably five or six months pregnant. I was irritable. I was basically everything that I was when I was on my period. So that's kind of what leaves me to believe, like I didn't have any kind of feeling that this was surgery related, just in terms of like inflammation or irritation. It did not feel like something that was coming from, you know, suture sites or just anything going on with that, with the actual surgery. It really just felt like my body was doing what it is supposed to do when it ovulates. I still have my ovaries, so my body still kind of goes through that process and that's what it felt like. While all of that was happening, I will say that around that time, I also started to gain weight back. So I haven't put on any excess weight. I'm not like gaining weight from the surgery. A lot of people have the surgery and they experience an unusual amount of weight gain. I am definitely not having that. I just basically put on all of the weight that I dropped before. Um, so I just started to feel more like myself, like my body just filled out a little bit. And with that, in addition to that, I talked about this in another update video in the past, but my boobs went back to normal. So at one point I kind of told you guys that I felt like, 
you know, my boobs are not perfect. I am a mother of two children. I breastfed. But for the most part, I still felt like I had like lively boobs. They weren't dropped real low. They were kind of full. But then at some point in my recovery, my boobs just like completely deflated. They, they weren't perky. Like it was just totally different than what I was used to experiencing. And now my boobs, I'm like find myself touching my boobs. Um, now my boobs have filled back out. They have filled out more on the top again. So it's not just like, they're not just bottom heavy. They filled out and in fact, I think they might actually be a little bit bigger because one of the bras that I used to wear, I put back on one day and they were falling out of the bra. So they are not as dropped anymore or they don't look as dropped. Um, and they have filled out. So weight gain, boobs back to normal. Talking about boobs, one day, not one day, during that week, I had the most insane boob sensitivity. I have never experienced that in the 28 years of my life. The only time it even came close was when I had children and I was breastfeeding. Because obviously when you're breastfeeding, you're creating like little tears in your nipple and that's painful it can sting it's just a painful experience and that is what I was experiencing with my boobs it was so intense that even if a shirt like grazed onto my nipple I felt it if I were taking a shower washing my body I felt it if one of the kids kind of rubbed up on me to give me a hug I felt it it was to the point where if my husband like wanted to cuddle with me and he were touching my boobs like grazing my boobs I would get so irritated and like get at him because it was painful. So I don't know if this is all just like my hormones, trying to regulate, trying to get back to a normal place, but that was something that I have never experienced before and it all came, it all kind of came at the same time with the weight gain and um, just the ovulation pains and with this next thing. So in addition to feeling all of these pains and these cramping and the bloating and the nipples, since about the eight week mark, I don't know, I mean I'll go into that further, but since about the eight week mark, I have just cried all the time. Like all the time I am crying and I just, it's kind of like if you experience anxiety, it's kind of like that same feeling where sometimes out of nowhere, you just get really bad anxiety. I will be doing nothing. I'll just be sitting somewhere doing dishes, whatever, and all of a sudden my chest feels really tight and it feels that like that feeling when you're trying to hold back tears um, and you're like choked up inside. And I have been feeling that a lot. I don't know, again, if this is just something that it's due to hormones, if it's because of all the circumstances going on in my personal life. I don't know if it's the two things combined. I'm definitely keeping an eye on it because I want to make sure that it's not like moving into like depression territory. Um, I want to make sure that it's something that I'm supposed to be experiencing, which I imagine it is because of the hormones. But, you know, just as an example, the other night I was laying in bed, my husband was asleep, I was, I was doing whatever on my phone, like playing games or whatever, and I just randomly started thinking about the whole process of putting a dog to sleep. How we as fur parents have to make the decision for our dogs to put them to sleep whenever they are done eating and they're not lively anymore and you could just see in their little tiny beautiful eyeballs that they are in pain and ready to go and how in nature we would never do that like in nature if they get hurt or they're starving they can't find food their body just kind of shuts down and they drift off to sleep and i just got to thinking like what is more cruel like and it, it seems like an obvious answer obviously but in my head it was like what if the dog actually isn't ready to go and we're putting it to sleep and it doesn't understand like one minute you know we're sitting there loving on it and the next minute it's in doggy heaven or I just like I got to thinking about all these little ridiculous things randomly and just cried and cried and I cried myself to sleep. Before I filmed this video I was watching a series finale of a show that I have watched for seven years and even though logically my brain was telling me this is a show, these are not real people, these are not real storylines, I just could not stop crying. I was so emotional about all of it. So not only is it just like randomly happening whenever during the day, it's also happening anytime something is even slightly sad or slightly sentimental. It's like I am a big ball of emotions and that has at times been uncomfortable. It's been awkward. It's just been 
I don't know, it's kind of crazy just because going through stuff in my personal life, there was a while where I completely shut down my emotions and now it's like I can't stop them. They're just coming out whenever they want to. Maybe it's a symptom of that. Maybe it's just like I got to a point where I was shutting everything down, not caring about anything, whatever, that now my body is just a, a switch happened and a flip of the switch happened and now it's just a mess, guys. Like sometimes it's a real mess. And finally, the last symptom I want to talk about, it's pretty insignificant, but it's something I figured was worth mentioning. I am at the point now where my incisions on the outside are obviously all healed up. I don't have any glue or any stitches or anything like that, but they are starting to be irritable. They are starting to itch. So I'm finding that sometimes like if I'm wearing a certain shirt and it rubs up on the incision, it itches. Sometimes if I had taken a shower and I haven't lotioned up, I'm feeling it's feeling itchy. So I've been doing everything that I can just not to mess with them at all. I don't want to scratch them. And, and it's not even like, wor I'm not worried about scarring. I really could care less about having scars or not. But I just wanted like my body to kind of heal the best that it can heal. So before showers, I've been doing dry brushing just to get my lymph node system or my lymph system kind of moving and, and working properly and making sure I'm getting off all the dead skin. I've been using lotion. I've been making sure that I exfoliate in the shower. So it's just a little minor symptom, but I figured it's worth mentioning because there are times when it's pretty annoying like it's kind of like why is this itching why won't it stop itching but I've just been doing whatever I can to basically promote new healthy skin growth and leaving it alone and that's all I have for you for the week eight and beyond update for now I am not going to rule out making future videos because at this point who knows what's going to happen maybe I'm going to go to my um, follow up appointment in September and figure out something new or have a new experience or whatever. So I just want to keep that open to the possibility of making further videos even though I pretty much made it into this this um, series in the last video. But we're just going through this together. I've seen your guys comments. I hope that you feel, I'm pretty sure I'm commenting back to everyone. I'm receiving emails, messages, uh, Snapchats, just Instagram DMs letting me know that you guys are going through it or you have the surgery coming up and you feel anxiety or these videos have helped ease your anxiety. So I want to make sure that you continue asking questions. I will continue answering and making videos for as long as I need to to help you guys keep the conversation going. And until the next video, I will see you guys later. Bye.